Uh, welcome to you all. Uh, thank you very much for joining us here in the Welsh Government. I'm looking forward very much to hearing from you and to try to answer whatever questions you've got for me. We've got schools from all parts of Wales uh, joining us this afternoon. So looking forward very much to hearing from you all. Um, ar ysgol gynta sydd da fi ar yr ester yw ysgol Pendalar Carnarfon a dwi meddwl mae Gwyn Heleg Roberts. Will the school children get a vaccine? Oh, wow. Uh, diolch yn fawr. Thank you uh, very much, Gwyn Heleg. So, the way the vaccine will be uh, ordered in Wales will be to use it with those people who need it the most first. And we know the coronavirus is especially uh, dangerous for older people uh, and for people who are ill for other reasons. So we're going to start by offering the vaccine to those people. And when we've got through those people, then we will start offering it to younger people and it'll come down the age range one by one. So people over 16 are entitled to the vaccine at the moment. Uh, so most school children will not get it, but most school children uh, don't get coronavirus either. And they certainly don't get it as seriously as people who are ill for other reasons or who are getting on uh, a bit in life. I'm going to James McNally at Pembroke Dock School. Um, how long have you had your job for and is it the best job in Wales? Oh, uh, well, James, thank you very much. Um, well, you know, just by chance, it is almost two years to the day uh, that I took on the job that I've got uh, now. So uh, the actual anniversary will be next week. So I'm just about up to the two year uh, limit. Is it the best job in Wales? I think there are some bits of it that are better than anybody else's job and there are probably some bits of it which are you know, uh, more difficult than some other jobs. So the nice bits are doing things like this, being able to talk to people, being able to hear from people, being able to learn from people about what they do every day. Uh, so that's the best bit. And then sometimes there are very difficult decisions, tough decisions, hard decisions. Uh, and on those days, I'm probably not sure that it is completely the best job uh, in Wales. But it's still a job that I'm very lucky to have. James, thank you. I think we've got Luan uh, with you as well. What's the best Christmas present you've ever had? And are you on the good or the bad list this year? Oh, now that's a hard question. Uh, well, I hope that I'm on Santa's good list, uh, of course. Uh, and I'm sure all of you will be uh, too. But to be on the good list, you've got to make sure that you stick to all the rules. Uh, so that's what I try and do. I try and make sure that I don't make any mistakes between here and Christmas Day. So that I stay on that list right up to Christmas. What is the best Christmas present I've ever had? Oh my goodness, what a difficult question that is. Um, okay, well, here, here's, uh, here's my best answer. Uh, when I was, Luan, I would guess almost exactly your age, uh, I had an auntie who gave me a record. Now, you won't remember what a record is. Uh, do you all know what a CD is? You've all seen CDs? Well, records were what people used to have before CDs were invented. Uh, they played music. And she gave me this big record. Uh, and I remember, I can remember now, I was in the kitchen in the house that uh, I lived in, taking this record out of its case, putting it on the record player, and listening to it. And I thought it was the most fantastic music that I'd ever heard. And during the years that I was in school, I ended up doing a lot of music. I used to play in a band, I used to sing in the choir. It was 
probably the thing that I enjoyed doing the most. And that record, which I had when I was, I think, about seven or eight years old, uh, I think it set me off uh, in enjoying music. Uh, and maybe for that reason, because I've had more than 50 years worth of enjoyment out of it, uh, maybe that was the best present that I ever had for Christmas. Uh, draw i ysgol uh, dyffryn conwy, mae'n dweud uh, fan hyn uh, ac i siarad am Marek. Uh, the Welsh Government, during the pandemic, has been able to operate and make uh, decisions on behalf of its citizens independently, without seeking direct instruction from the UK Government. Do you think you and, you and your party should seek further freedom regarding self-governance self of the Welsh nation? Oh, I, I was about to say yes, Marek, until your very final uh, bit of your question. Uh, so you're absolutely right. You know, we have a very powerful Senedd here in Wales. It has independent ability to make the law here in Wales. And the Welsh Government has independent powers to make decisions for what we think are right for people in Wales. Uh, you went on to say to me, did I think we should have more uh, of those powers? And my answer to that would be yes. I don't think the devolution journey is over yet. There, there is more that needs to be done to strengthen uh, the Senedd and devolution here in Wales. But then you asked me right at the end whether that should be as self-government. And for many people, that would mean taking Wales out of the United Kingdom. Uh, and I don't think that that is in the best interests of people in Wales. Uh, I want a powerful Senedd. I want a Senedd that uses those powers in an assertive sort of way, but where we still are able to do some things together with our friends and colleagues in Scotland, Northern Ireland, and in England, where that is to the best advantage of people in Wales. I don't think you have to choose between the two. I think we can have a powerful Senedd doing the things that matter here and still have the advantage of being able to cooperate with other people on things that are better done by acting together. Um, can I go at that even to Siena? Uh, Siena Jeffers and Ysgol Glan Morva. Good morning. What is the first thing you do on Christmas Day? Oh, Sienna, well, uh, hello to you uh, as well. Uh, well, uh, the first thing that I do on Christmas Day is to go downstairs and find out whether Father Christmas has eaten all the mince pie uh, that I will have left for him before I went to bed. Uh, I'll probably check to see if the reindeer have eaten the carrot. Uh, and I might check to see whether Father Christmas has drunk the little drop of sherry that I've left for him as well. But that's the first thing that I'll do on Christmas Day. Friend, how about our first Prime Minister? <laughs> <laughs> it's a busy time of the year for you. Oh, Christmas is always a busy time uh, of the year. Um, normally, you know, before coronavirus, uh, I would spend quite a lot of my time around Christmas coming out to schools uh, in Cairo, uh, in Ely, in Canton, in, in Cardiff, where I live. Because uh, I'm very lucky in that way. You get invited to go and hear Christmas concerts, see Christmas plays, hear what people are up to. So Christmas is always a busy time uh, of the year. Uh, here's something else I normally get to do is I normally get to go out with a postman. So it's a very, very busy time of the year for all those people who deliver letters to us and parcels to us and so on. Uh, and almost every Christmas, I would go to the sorting office in Canton, not far, I guess, from where, where you will live, uh, Fionn, and I would go and meet some of the people who deliver all those letters to us. Uh, and I would go out with one of them to see just how busy they are at this time of the year. So uh, I was asked earlier, wasn't I, by James, uh, whether being the First Minister was the best job in Wales. Uh, and those are some of the best bits of it. 
to see just how busy Christmas is for everybody else uh, and to spend a bit of time uh, with them. So, Fionn, diolch fawr am a question to Brody, who I can see sitting next to you. Our First Minister. Brody. Who do you think deserves the biggest thank you at Christmas this year? Oh, wow. I think the people who deserve the biggest thank you are all those people who've managed to keep things going for us during this extraordinary and difficult year. And there's a huge number of people like that, aren't there? I mentioned this a minute ago, the people who deliver the post every day. They never stop working right through the pandemic. Every single day they turned up to work and they made sure that that post got out to people who needed it. Uh, I think of the people who work in our shops. You know, we all need food. We've all got to go out and get things we need. And all through the pandemic, even when it was really tough, the people who work in our supermarkets turned up to work every day, uh, even though they knew that there was a lot of coronavirus about and there may be people coming in who were infectious. They still turned up to work every day. The teachers who come into school, the people who come in every day and and help you and make sure that schools have kept open. I think they need to be on the top of the list to say thank you to them. And of course, maybe most of all, those people in our NHS and in our care homes, those people who come into work every day to look after other people who are unwell and who in a way put themselves at risk in order to help other people. That's a very brave thing to do, isn't it? Is to say, I'm going to go into work today. I know that this may put me in a difficult position, but some other people are having even bigger troubles and I'm going to go in to work today to help them. So I think all those people who have helped us to get through this year ought to be the people who get our biggest thank you but maybe those doctors, those nurses, those cleaners, all those people who have kept our hospitals and our health service working for us all, maybe this year, more than any other year, they need the biggest thank you of all. And thank you, Brody. thank you very much indeed for giving me the chance to say that thank you to all those people uh, this afternoon. Diolch yn fawr. Now, I think that that brings us to the end of all the questions uh, that we've got. So, look, uh, I spend a lot of my uh, day answering questions. I get, answered quest I get asked questions by journalists. I get asked questions by members of the Senev uh, here. Uh, I get asked questions by people in the civil service. But I think your questions have been as good as any questions that anybody has asked me this whole year. And I'm very grateful indeed to you all. Thank you all very much indeed. Have a very, very happy Christmas.